Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Asma Lazmi. I am holding PhD from Civil Engineering Department from Virginia Tech. Today, I would like to talk about uh, develop a special splitting strategy on land use data for systematic prediction model validation approach. Uh, the presentation outline is about introduction, problem statement, research objectives, research contribution, methodology, study area, data description, modeling approach, result, contribution, and future works. So, uh, the contemporary information age has facilitated easier and cheaper access to remote sensing, environmental, and technical data in big data form. Big data sets may come in somewhat complex data formats and types that are not readily using, usable in available epidemiological and environmental models. A these new forms of data present new challenges to traditional study models. Accordingly, there has been a need, there has been a need to develop new methods and empirical models of analysis. Some of the developments include machine learning and forms of data mining that allow for collection of data in a reliable and scalable manner in the big data context. For instance, machine learning has been considerably used in epidemiology and environmental studies involving indoor and outdoor air pollution. While there are a range of algorithms that have been preferred for application in, in epidemiology, such as decision tree, k-means, support vector machine, and artificial neural networks. The field of air pollution epidemiology has been consider considered as a prediction based intended to discover knowledge. Special data mining, mining which involves extracting data on special patterns and special data Base is considered a knowledge discovery process that uses a prediction based algorithm. In describing a special data mining approach, Kobersky in 1996 explained that dimensions of larger data sets tend to become even larger as geo data carries associated metadata to describe its various properties. Accordingly, there is a need to, ad to adopt a spatial clustering. Machine learning algorithms designed for forecasting concentrations of pollution in a spatial temporal space can be applied in pollution, in pollution monitoring. NIBS in, in 2014 observed that most land use regression models targeted a specific city. Studied by Billin et al. 2013 and Ming and her group in 2015 reported that the performance of the model was subjected to autocorrelation and non stationarily, which increased error in the models. In their report, for example, Billin in observed varying outcomes from land use model. Chen and his group in 2019 established that the established decreased of the coefficient of the determination for fine particle concentration for nitrogen dioxide when cross validation was applied, indicating that the model tended to overestimate. Also, in 2020, Dai and his group targeted that validation strategies are needed. He demonstrated the need by using nitrogen dioxide machine learning prediction model using both cross-validation and external validation. Now, the uh, problem statement is the, the foregoing review indicates uncertainties in prediction models with high spatial resolution. The case calls for continu continuous improving or improvement of exist 
testing models to improve the accuracy of such models. Accordingly, the current research proposed to use systematic approach to develop more, a more accurate model using complex machine learning clustering. Now, there is, this research objectives include uh, introduce systematic validation approach by splitting data spatially rather than the conventional conventional randomly split. This will help to find out a more realistic sense model and integrating the spatial model that hasn't been done in a big problem with a spatial variable that changes in space. This research computer, the contribution of this research is to use more sophisticated machine learning clustering and validation approach to develop more reliable model for multivariable patterns in the data set, in the database. Also incorporate a variety of machine learning methods to produce more effective forecasting model. Finally, assess urban planning to promote healthy choices healthy model choices. So uh, in 2009, Han showed that the objective criterion used in the k-mean algorithm is typically the squared error function defined as uh, total absol uh, absolute error of all observation in the data set E equal the summation of the summation of the point x of a specific element in a cluster CI minus MI, which is the representative objective object of CI. <clears throat> Although the k-mean algorithm is effective at analyzing massive amount of data, it has significant drawbacks. The computational component of these special clustering classifier become poor prohibitively expensive with massive data sets. It is also sensitive to noise and outlier data points. Here are the study area. Blacksburg is a small town with somewhat similar spatial features, so splitting the data set based on a specific location within Blacksburg, like using a sensor tract, ID number would not be representative to use for spatial validate uh, prediction model performance. Therefore, the spatial variable, which is land use data and its transportation, were used to segment, to segment observational data and define the spatial split. Uh, the data description, actually, this study uses secondary data describing data in the rural location of Blacksburg found by Hanke and his group in 2019 in, in Virginia Tech. The special variable, land use, natural environment, and the traffic variables were collected from publicity, publicly available sources, except the traffic volumes were collecting using the demand model. All spatial variables were tabulated at 15 buffer sizes, uh, going from 25 to 3,000 meters, increasing from 25 to 3,000 meters. So, <clears throat> uh, the spatial data will be clustered using a spatial, especially using k-mean clustering algorithm. The data should reduce in order to decrease the complicity of the model. Some data reduction techniques were applied to gain the most important variable for clustering. Also, uh, some available library were used to define the optimal number of clustering. Available also software were used like Anaconda and uh, Meet, uh, MATLAB. So uh, this. Uh, the straight, uh, the, no, there is no universal critical approach for determining the best number of a cluster for any particle data collection exists. The straight way, the straightforward way is to compare the outcomes of the numbers run with different K classes and selecting the best one based on a set of a criteria. However, we must be cautious because 
By definition, higher k leads in a smaller error function values, but it is also increases the chance of overfitting. So we apply some, uh, I apply some data reduction techniques to overcome the k-mean clustering drawback. Uh, 33 land use variable were reduced to be used for the k-mean cluster algorithm. The following three techniques were applied and the best one was taken. The first technique is the recursive feature elimination. The second is the principal component analysis and principal component analysis after removing correlated features. So the uh, recursive feature elimination, uh, I use the yellow brick library to figure out the best representative feature. In this model, the last year regression algorithm were defined used the recursive feature elimination. To apply lasso regression, the uh, optimal alpha value should be defined. So from the same library, I used uh, the same library to define the best alpha value. The main issue of recursive feature elimination is that it can be expensive to run. Therefore, one way to reduce the number of features removing the correlated features as we don't want highly correlated features in our data set because they provide the same information the correlation matrix was the new then uh, therefore the correlation matrix was used to remove the most correlated feature from the data frame using the correct correlation coefficient above 80 percent this step reduced the variable from 33 330 to 39 variable here is the output from uh, the recursive feature animation. So first of all, as I said, here I used uh, the yellow break library to define the best alpha, which was uh, 0.16. This alpha were then used to, in the recursive feature elimination to define the representative feature. Finally, we get that we have four features. Finally, these four features were used in the k-mean clustering to define them, uh, were used on the um, uh, we use elbow, elbow technique to find the most uh, optimal uh, k value, which is here uh, 19 cluster. The second approach is the principal component analysis. So I use the sklearn library to apply the principal component analysis. This library is based on signal barrier decomposition for feature exact extraction. Uh, the figure shows that 90% variance covered by 25 principal components here. We can find that 95 uh, was covered by 25 principal components. And this component were then used to define the optimal number of a cluster. And here we can find that 28 clusters were found using also the elbow function. Finally, the principal... Uh, the same principal component analysis after removing correlated feature were used. I use the same technique for removing the correlated feature that used in the first approach. Then I apply the principal component analysis. Here we can say, see that 90% variance covered by 21 principal component. These 21 principal component were then used to define the optimal number of the cluster. And we got here 23 cluster. So the result from, uh, I use the first approach, and the result from this approach shows that the spatial data can split area in different area that are not belong the same location, but share spatial characteristics. You can see here in the figure, it shows the resulting, uh, resulting of split in a Blacksburg area from regressive feature elimination approach. And you can see here, there is a green area that not belong the same location, but have similar spatial patterns. And there is mixed here in the downtown area, uh, the green reflect this, uh, the area that's similar uh, specification here in the, the town, in the downtown area, and here is in the downtown areas. So they, they not belong in the same location, but have the same spe spatial characteristics. This approach can be used on uh, a small town. 
Now, the conclusion and the future work, this work could be used as a part of applying machine learning algorithm in the land use data to systematic split the data from more reliable and stable model. For future work, it will be helpful to come to compare the difference of the performance between random and spatial split strategy. This can helping to overcome the model overestimating. Finally, this project could be used to assess urban planners to promote healthy transportation choices. This are, these are the reference. Thank you for listening.